Hi, my name is Perry Cooper and I'm a 3D and motion graphics designer working in the advertising industry and posting animations regularly to Instagram. In this series I'm going to show you how to create this fun looping factory scene from start to finish using Cinema 4D R20, Octane Render 2020 and After Effects 4 Post. In this video we'll set up the dynamic elements in the scene. These are the spheres tipping out of the truck built using MoGraph and a simple X-Particles liquid simulation that squeezes out of the funnel into the back of the foreground truck. Let's get started. So to set the dynamics I'm going to hide our bridge wall section because I want to actually see what's going on on the first frame. Let's go back to frame one and we want to set up our dynamics in the back here. So let's um, bring in a MoGraph cloner and I'm going to put it in the container and just PSR that just so that we can, and that's position scale rotation, just resetting that back to zero, just so it's in the center of our truck roughly. And I'm going to call this uh, truck bridge uh, cloner. And I don't want it inside the truck because it will mean the cloner is affected when the, the truck moves forwards and backwards. So when we kind of cache these particles, we don't want them to then be dragged along by the truck when we actually want it to be in the container going around the con conveyor belt. So let's uh, bring in a sphere, add that to the cloner, and I'm going to take the radius of this down to seven. And if I go back into the truck cloner. I'm actually going to change this to a grid array. And then for my settings here, I'm going to say this is like X, Y, Z. So I'm going to say 4, 4 and 12 for our amounts. And then for our endpoints, I'm going to say 80. So that's in our X, 120 in the Y. And I'm going to say like 350 in the Z. So we're kind of like filling out that truck. So we're going to allow these to kind of drop in. And that's why I wanted the truck to be still for a few frames to allow that to happen. So what I'm going to add to this is, oh, I've got this in here, this is a random I'm going to use. So um, go to effectors, I'm going to add this random. And what I've got in this random is um, a scale of 1.2. And then color mode is usually set to off. I'm sending this to, uh, setting this to effector color so that down the line when we add materials, we can um, uh, change, uh, have a gradient of colors of our choosing. Um, so we need to make sure that's turned on. And when we cache our, um, our simulation, um, we can't kind of go back and add that in. We'd have to recache. So we need to make sure that the color randomness is baked in now. So with that being said, let's put this in our effectors and we'll call this um, uh, truck. truck bridge random be a random so we know that's all in there that's all together and then uh, with our clone if I just press play oh no we need to actually add on our tag to make it dynamic so let's go to tags simulation tags and we want to add a rigid body now if we just have it as it is at the moment everything will just drop down in one go we want them all to be separate. So let's go to inherit tag and say apply to children and then individual elements. We want to say all. We want these to all be individual balls. So if I press play, see they're all separating, but they're just falling through the truck. So that's those set up. Save that. So we want to make sure that our truck is going to interact with these uh, balls. So go into the truck and we've got the container and the door. They're the two items that we want to be affected. So let's select both of those then go to tags, simulation tags, and we want to say collider body. And then for shape, rather than automatic, I'm going to set this to static mesh. And if I press play, see they're now dropping in. And actually, let's go to our main view and we can kind of have a preview and see how they're going to drop out of the back of our object. When it comes to a stop, now it's turning and they're all pouring. Perfect. Obviously, the one thing is they're pouring straight through our uh, container. So we need to make sure that our container also has those tags on. So let's go to our uh, conveyor animated. Then we have our containers. So in here we've got our main and glass. So we want both of these 
to be set to be uh, um, interactive. So let's go to tags, simulation tags, and then we're going to add collider body on again, and we're going to set that to static mesh. Now we're not going to be able to see the particles inside, so let's um, select the glass and just turn X-ray on. Do that. Let's go to up here and turn that X-ray on. I just want to because we're going to have the problem of when this loops, they're going to disappear. So we need to cache them and loop them. So let's go to frame zero and let's just press play, and you'll see the issue that we've got. So our truck comes in, reverses going to drop all of our spheres into the back so they should all fall in nice so now it's starting to go off screen but it's not going to get off screen in time before we get to frame 250 so when we loop around they're just going to suddenly disappear so what we want to do is cache our um our, anim our simulation so that it will run at the beginning as well as the end but what we need to do is because of the particles or the simulation kind of falls in here and then it gets to here and it doesn't quite get off frame so we're going to add need to add additional frames and make sure it's moving at the same speed so it matches the beginning of our animation if that makes sense so what i'm going to do is go to the uh, dope sheet and i'm going to uh, actually go to uh, my project settings and I'm going to increase this by another 100 frames. So let's change this to 350. Okay. And we want to kind of match this conveyor controller animation at the beginning, but at the end. Now we could set a um, set here. So you've got after constant, you could set that to repeat, but if you do that with a simulation, it can get confused and it can just make all the particles explode, which we don't want. So I'm just going to add on another keyframe of animation, which is reasonably easy. So we can just get our conveyor controller. Now, between um, these 100 frames and these 100 frames, we move 12.5% at a time. So we just need to move that again. So on the last frame, we just want this to be 62.5%. Then I'm going to set that as a keyframe. So this frame is linear as it is at the beginning, um, but this frame uh, is locked at the minute and it's minus 25. I'm just going to set this to this kind of uh, easy easing and um, I'm just going to make this minus 20 so it matches the minus 20 here. So we're going to have that same animation moving along. Okay, so, so now we've got this extended animation of our uh, conveyor belt, which is literally just for... Uh, do, setting up this uh, particle loop. Let's go to our cloner and what I want to do actually is actually go on the cloner and then go tags, MoGraph tags and I'm going to add a MoGraph cache and then I'm going to bake that. So this is going to bake this into the cinema file and you can see it totaling up down the bottom here. And this is going to just up the file size of our file. So depending on the amount of particles you've got and your size of your simulation, this can get quite big. Right, so now that's done, now we can drag along the timeline and we can see all of our spheres going into the crate and then they go fully off screen. So now I can go back to my project settings and I can reset my scene to 250 by 250. And that's our end frame. Now with our cloner, I'm going to duplicate it. Now we're going to go to our cache and we've got this playback. So I want to set the offset of this to minus 250. I set that. I'm going to go back to the first frame. See our particles are already there. And they're, and they're going off in time with our animation. Let's turn our bridge back on. So now our dynamic sort of spheres come in, they fall into the container, they go off. Obviously we've got a bit of slow payback because we've got a lot of animation all going on at the same time. And now we're back to frame one, we've got that kind of uh, loop. So let's, um, let's call this cloner main and we'll call this one 
back start so just so we know what's going on but yeah that's how we would reset this how to make create this loop okay so now i want this liquid to come out of this uh, tube and fall into the back of the truck and then for the truck to drive off now like we did with the spheres in the back of the other truck on the bridge um, i want to be able to loop this round so um the truck at the beginning goes off and we see the liquid in it and then the truck the other truck that comes in it falls in so to do that i'm going to do it in a separate file so all i've done is deleted everything else apart from the truck this funnel and this wall just so i can see where this guy goes kind of out of the door um i've extended the uh, timeline to 350 in the same way we're going to cache our x particles once we've um created the simulation and then we're going to um you import that into our previous scene right so with that being said let's bring in um, uh, x parts xp system and to get that in the right position i'm just going to put it under the funnel end and reset my psr i'll bring that back out again and let's zoom in then we can uh, start playing around with our settings so uh, the first thing I want to do is just turn off the icon in viewport and then my emitter um, it's currently set to plus z we're going to change this to minus y we're going to make this a circle and the disk radius is going to be 30. if we press play now you can see it's just falling out the bottom now I want to time this with the kind of squeeze of this bag thing that we've got here and that happens uh, on frame 185 so my emitter under emission rather than emit all frames I'm going to change that to starting on frame 185 and I want to end on frame 250 uh, and rather than rate for our emission mode because we're doing a uh, liquid I'm going to make this hexagonal so let's press play and rather than having to press play all the way from the beginning I'm just going to set this first frame to be something like let's say like 160 that just means that when we keep going to play back and seeing how it looks it's quite quick so you can see we've got those particles falling but they're not interacting with anything and we need some gravity in there so they they fall at a normal rate so we're going to add in a couple of things the first one is I'm just going to paste in this container so it's a duplicate of Remember we did the unbroken version that we saved of the uh, truck. Well, I've basically just um, taken that unbroken version of the back of the truck. And I've actually raised the bed of the inside of the truck. And the reason I've done that is that we're, we're not, we haven't got time to put like too much liquid in. So um, all the liquid is going to go in and we might not see it slosh around at all. So we just want to make sure that we can at least see a little bit of it. So I've just brought that flat bed up. Okay, so I'm going to stick that in the truck. And then we can probably just hide the container because we're not going to use any of it. The only thing that we're actually going to export out of here is the actual end result of the liquid that we're, once we're happy with it. So for that container, I'm going to go to X particles and add a collider. Um, I'm probably going to up the friction on this to 100. I want it I want the I don't want everything to kind of slide around too much I'll probably take the bounce down let's just press play see it's sitting in and <laughs> not quite making it so what I want to do is um, add some gravity in probably next so let's go to motion modifiers and choose XP gravity and we can leave this at the standard settings now if we press play it should fall out a lot quicker and at least fall out in time to actually go into the uh, into the back of the truck that's cool right okay so um, a couple of things I want to do uh, we we'll go back here I'm going to reduce the spacing on here so these kind of a bit more clumped together um, I'm going to maybe make this like about 80% and uh, we'll get the effect of this once we add on our couple of dynamic objects so let's add on uh, xp fluid effects 
Um, I'm going to change the mode from velocity to position and this is hopefully so it won't fly out the back of the truck when it starts moving. So now you can see we've got that liquid there. Got a bit of a splash. I don't want it to go on the ground. Oh, I don't mind the fact that it splashes out, but I don't want it to go on the ground here because obviously we've got a loop. So I don't want to have to have liquid at the beginning and the end. I don't mind if it splashed and it went after it goes through the door. So that's why I kind of kept the door there to make sure um, see what was going on. So I'm just going to update the, uh, the dampening, make that higher and then see if that will kind of slow that splash down. Not too much. So I think I'll go to the dynamics again and I'm going to add on some XP constraints. And then in here, I'm going to turn on viscosity. So let's have a look what that looks like. So you see that's keeping it together a bit more. It's keeping it in the back of the truck. And actually, kind of not flying out too much. So let's replay that might up the stiffness a little bit yeah so it's just keeping it in there until it gets to the end so that's nice um, if I go to the XP emitter actually let's add on a generator we'll add on an XP OVDB OVDB measure, I'm going to just call this measure. I'm going to add on a measure. Then for the measure, we want to mesh our XP emitter. So let's just reset and see what this looks like. So at the moment, it's just a big viscous kind of blob and it's far too thick. So we can make some changes. So if we look at our um, emitter here, the uh, radius is set to three. So I'm going to go to the measure actually could take this point radius down to something similar so maybe like about three or um, and then under filters I turn filters on and add a Gaussian kind of smooth that out got the iterations and width maybe I'll up the width that really smooths it out let's see what that looks like I can see this kind of oozy um, liquid coming out we'll just run this through and make sure it works yep and I don't mind having this kind of little overlap And uh, because we put the Gaussian on, it's kind of just smoothing that out. I don't mind the fact that that's coming off because by this time we're actually going to have shut the gate. So go back. I'm going to save that. Right. Now, now we can try and export this system. So I'm going to uh, actually delete everything. Oh, no. We want the container. What we'll actually do is we'll delete the funnel, back wall, and the door. Now we've deleted those. Rather than exporting it straight away, we'll cache our um, our, our our OV our measure so that um, we don't need to kind of take a long time in exporting it. We don't need to export the truck. So go to X particles, go to XP cache, and we'll um, what we'll do is we'll just save it internal, so just to this file basically we'll say build cache and that will cache both of these objects and then when we go to export the Alembic it should export this mesh this cache mesh and it shouldn't take too long right so now that's cached we should be able to play that back so there's our liquid going in and then we get a little bit of it blobbing out of the truck at the end um, and obviously this is a very simple setup. You could do a lot more complicated than this, but this is just one little part of this animation that we're doing. So what I'm going to do now is delete the truck. So I'm just leaving our objects in here, our cache and our XP system. 
Now I'm going to say file fault as alembic. We'll save it as X particles. Actually, we'll call it liquid. Yeah, let's just press OK. We can leave this. There we go. So that saved it as an alembic file. Now we can go back to our main animation. Now in our main animation, we can bring in our Alembic. So let's do file, merge, go to our liquid ABC file. We want the frame rate to be 25. Make sure it's the same across all, both your files. And then all these other settings we'll leave as is. And I'll press OK. So you can see there's our liquid. It's just totally not in the right position. Now what it seems to have done is even though we said frame 0 to 350, it's actually our first frame is the first frame of the cached file which was frame 185 so let's just open up what's been exported and we only actually need this uh, mesher file so let's delete everything else and I'm just going to call this liquid and for the offset we want to offset this to frame 185 so now as this squeezes there we go, our liquid's coming out, going into the back of our truck. Now we want to duplicate this and have it so that we've got it at the beginning as well. So I'm just going to duplicate the liquid. I'm going to call this liquid start. Liquid end, something like that. Bring this down here. Um, so this liquid start we need to change the offset. So I did have a play around the numbers. I think minus 65 was the right amount. So let's have a look. Press play, go back. Yep, and that matches up. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next video, we'll set up the materials. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.